Hello, Von Randy here, and today we're going to be looking at a shop vac motor. Uh, this is from a shop vac vacuum. I don't know if there's an actual size number on this particular vacuum. There probably is somewhere. It um, doesn't really matter. Uh, most of these motors, other than being you know, a little bit differently sized, are pretty much all the same. Um, if you have a shop vac vacuum that has failed, or pretty much probably any one of the other cheap big box store vacuums, there's been two common failure points I've been seeing as of late. The uh, most common one lately seems to be the switch here. The last uh, three vacuums I've fixed have been all failed switches. Um, they seem to be making these uh, switches cheaper and cheaper. Uh, what's happening basically, the internals of the switch, basically from the switch being turned on and off, are arcing and melting the internal components of the switch and the switch is essentially self-destructing. So that's pretty much uh, item one here that makes you buy a new shop vac vacuum. Now you can uh, replace these switches. Uh, shop vac actually does sell replacement switches. Uh, though personally folks, I would not recommend buying the replacement switches because you're gonna end up doing the same thing. The switch is so cheap, it's garbage. Absolute garbage. So do yourself a favor, if you have a failed switch, go out to your local hardware store and uh, buy yourself a replacement switch, a good quality one. Um, even if you have to use like a light switch type thing, that would probably be better than this. Actually, a uh, light switch probably, because this is a double pull switch, that probably would not work. But uh, that is probably, like I said, seems like lately that has been the most common failure point. And then the uh, what used to be the most common failure point is the uh, doohickey on this side here. This little yellow box, if you will, here. And for those of you who've seen my last video on that, I'm kind of doing this video as a follow-up just to show you folks what is actually in there. And yes, I am calling it a doohickey. Um, a lot of the uh, really smart people in the comments have uh, been commenting and saying what they think it is. And I'm not going to necessarily disagree with them. Maybe they are right. But I don't think this is a thermal switch. It could, well, it's definitely not a switch. That I know, folks. It is not a switch. I will guarantee you that. Because if it's a thermal switch, a thermal switch, once it overheats, shuts off, cools down, and the switch basically will turn back on, allowing you to turn the vacuum back on. Whatever this is, is not a switch. It is a failure point. And uh, pretty much a device, I would say, that is designed to make the vacuum fail prematurely, making you buy a new vacuum. So anyway, let's see if we can get this out here. Um, there's not much to see in the switch, so I'm not going to bother taking the switch out. I mean, it's a switch. So... Let's uh, see if we can uh, pry this out here. And uh, by the way, it doesn't seem like sometimes it takes long for these switches to fail. Uh, the vacuum next to me here, actually I don't know, if, yeah you can see it in the uh, video there. The vacuum next to me, I think it was six months old when it failed. The uh, switch gave out on it, contacts burned up, and that was it. Okay, so we pried this little yellow, let me uh, zoom in the camera here so you hopefully can get a little bit better view of this. So just pry that out there. I'm gonna pop that yellow looking box out. So there's the two uh, wires going into it, the contacts. So here's all that's left of this yellow box. And hopefully you can see in there, the camera will focus. That is the uh, self-destruct failure device in there. We'll see if we can actually get that out here a moment. And according to the comments, everybody is saying this is a thermal fuse. I don't know if I can get this without losing it here. So there you folks go. That is the uh, device that causes your vacuum to fail. Now everybody seems to think this is a thermal fuse. I'm going to have to disagree folks, and I'm going to say this is just a fuse. I don't think there's anything thermal fusing about this other than fuse for those who don't know it gets hot and melts that's pretty much i guess you could say a thermal fuse now i do have an actual real thermal fuse it'll focus here there we go so there is a real thermal fuse i don't know what the rating let's see if i can read this here a moment should have a rating on the outside of this here uh, 139 looks like it says 139 is the rating on this particular fuse I think you should be able to see that there so this and this are obviously two different things here 
So a lot of people saying this is a thermal fuse in this vacuum that is failing. Like I said, uh, maybe this is a thermal fuse. I'm going to argue it is simply just a fusible link type thing that again, like I said, is designed to fail prematurely under the guise of keeping you safe, which arguably it might, but uh, being a fuse, it's not much different than the breaker on your wall, at least if your house is wired properly, or in this case, barn. So we're just going to put this back in here a moment. Relatively simple to uh, stick back in. There we go, and the wire on this side, that does not look like it's in the right spot. There we go, like that. Okay, so with that, pretty much uh, showed you folks there the uh, common failure points. Um, like I said in the past, I have butt connected these two wires together. That fixes the problem. Probably not the greatest solution because you do take out what could arguably be a safety device here. Although, like I said, being a fuse, I don't know that it has that much value. Because if you do experience a short, uh, one, modern wiring should all have ground fault plugs in them nowadays. So the ground fault plug might catch it. And at the very least, your breakers should catch it as well. So just seems redundant there. Not that that's a bad thing. And of course, if you have a problem with your fuse, now normally uh, with the uh, switches here, let me zoom this back out here. Normally with these switches here, you can almost always tell when the switch is bad. When you go to push the switch, you can feel it right away. Something's wrong with the switch. This one has a nice tactile push to it. Uh, this is a brand new uh, switch in this particular vacuum here, as is the one uh, behind me here. So anyway, we're gonna get this uh, vacuum put back together here and uh, maybe I'll show you folks another uh, thing or two here and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay folks, and we're back here again and I got one more vacuum cleaner here. This is my dad's old vacuum cleaner. I don't know how old it is. It's maybe 15, 20 years old, something like that. I took the uh, motor out of that. Uh, again, very similar type of motor. Um, I will note one thing different here, the switch. Only two wires. But the biggest thing is, I do not see any self-destruct mechanism on this. Uh, these appear to be the brushes here. And if you notice, let's see if I can get this right here. We got one wire going in there. And you got the other wire going on the other side here. And then same thing on here. There doesn't appear to be any fuse of any type that I am seeing on here because it connects straight to the uh, windings here from what I am seeing. Unless there's something hidden down inside here, which is possible. I don't know if I want to take the plastic casing off here because this does appear to hold the uh, brushes in. And I really don't want to take that apart if I have to. But from what I'm seeing, and I can see down in here, there is no, again, like I say, self-destruct mechanism on this particular motor, which is probably why it has lasted for the last uh, 15, 20 years, something like that. Again, this is an older, much older shot back. Uh, completely different design. In fact, the uh, the hose on the new shop back beside me here doesn't actually, I guess you could make it fit, but a little bit different connection design. And yeah, like I said, interesting too enough too to see the uh, different style, just a two, uh, two prong switch there instead of all four wires being connected. But big difference, no self-destruct mechanism. Okay, folks, we're back for one more little uh, fun trick here. I got a fuse holder, as you folks can probably see in front of me, with some uh, rather questionable looking wiring going on. This is kind of my test wiring setup. And a lot of people think that when I put the 12 volt car fuse in there, that is going to cause the place to burn down. So let's uh, find out what really happens when we actually do this. Uh, basic setup here, uh, we just simply got a fuse holder connected to a plug, which connected to a plug right there, which we're going to plug into the outlet here in a moment. So let's uh, find out what happens when this uh, fails. If I can get this fuse in here anyway. Oh, come on, fuse holder. There we go. Okay, so we got the fuse in there. We're gonna plug the plug in. I got the switch here on. We'll find out what happens when a 12 volt fuse self-destructs at 120 volts. Now, the question is, did the fuse fail? It appears to have failed. Oh yes, folks, okay, so here we go. 
The fuse has definitely failed. In fact, it looks like it blew the entire interior of the fuse out. So everybody seems to think this is incredibly dangerous. Again, these extremely smart people seem to think, uh, yeah. Now, I'm not saying I would necessarily agree with doing this, by the way. Uh, you know, a 12-volt fuse and a 120-volt system, not necessarily the greatest idea, but it worked. And what you folks may have noticed as well, and I don't know if you heard this in the video or not, but you probably saw the lights go out. That's because the breaker flipped. So everybody seems to forget. Uh, I, I guess these extremely smart people don't know uh, maybe about breakers or something. There's these things that go in uh, fuse or breaker panels, and uh, yeah, when something goes wrong, they flip off. Again, that's for the extremely smart people who seem to uh, know what they're talking about. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you folks. For the uh, fun of it here, we can see what a bigger fuse will do. This is a 15 amp fuse. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see what's what happens here. I don't exactly want to touch this, by the way. Oh, yes, okay. So again, um, for the extremely smart people out there, it seems the breaker has shut off. Uh, again, you folks probably can't see that, but the light, uh, the light's there behind the shut off. Uh, let's see, let me uh, unplug this here a moment. Oh, look at this. Okay, you folks might find this amusing. Uh, for those of you who think this is incredibly dangerous, I want you folks to see something here. I think you'll find this interesting. What failed first? Look at that fuse. Look at that fuse. The breaker blew before the fuse blew. I'll probably throw that fuse away anyway. I don't want to think I want to take a chance using it again. But anyway, I just wanted to address some of those uh, questions that uh, seem to be coming up by extremely smart people that watched my uh, video on how to repair a shop back there. Uh, just a disclaimer, uh, do everything you've seen here at your own uh, risk. So anyway, uh, if you folks have any comments or questions about this, I hope that answered some questions here. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time.